Hey guys, how's it going? My last post was probably three years ago from the looks of it. I just watched that video uh, just to kind of catch myself up uh, where it left off. And now I think I want to try posting again, possibly posting just the things I'm working on and just kind of day-to-day -day things. And I'm going to start off kind of where I left off uh, with the Jeep. So not much has gotten done for three years. I've done a decent amount of things to it, but I didn't really have the tooling and the knowledge and the skills to do what I wanted to do. So I have been kind of building up all of those things and working on all kinds of projects and getting more tools and get better at working with my hands. So I'm finally going to show where I've been. So I'll take you around this thing. Okay, so this is basically where she sits right now. I'm gonna forget almost all the names of the parts and things that I've done, but I will try to remember as we go and just comment if you guys have any questions. So, starting up here at the front, I ended up going with a, a Curry 44 axle. Just, I'm trying to keep everything kind of light and I'm not planning to have a bunch of power on this, like a, you know, big blown LS or really anything with that much power. I want to try to stick with the four liter. Uh, however, you know, things change. So my goal is to build a basically the strongest uh, Curry 44 that I can here that can take some uh, air time and not bend and just kind of take a bunch of abuse. And then the outside, it has uh, TerraFlex knuckles with the Terraflex 8 lug and hub kit on it and the Terraflex high modulus brakes. Just giant rotors and calipers and everything. So I mean they're they're pretty big. I mean looking compared to my hand. So hopefully that'll help her stop and everything. And I mean I'm changing everything as I go. So right here I have kind of the three link kit kind of mocked up and this is gonna get pulled off actually and I mean it's all kind of bolted in there and everything but uh, I'm gonna pull it off long story short and it is gonna go on this Jeep <laughs> that I ended up buying so and I'll talk about that in a little bit so uh, yeah that'll get pulled off I'm gonna build um, basically a four link for the front, not triangulated, but some type of four link, almost like uh, the original design, that can take a little bit more travel and uh, hopefully is gonna be pretty strong. I, I kinda wanna build it like a like all around use vehicle. So I want it to be able to do everything. But yeah, that's basically the, the front end right there. And I've cut out the fenders to kind of see where the shocks will mount and stuff, but I'm gonna build the the front shock mounts and cage and all those parts here pretty soon. And that will kind of determine where the axle lands because I don't have much room. Let me open up the hood here real quick. I'll show you. Stick right there. So I don't have much room with how the shocks need to lay back in here with like the brake booster and all of the stock stuff. So basically I'm going to go to uh, mechanical brakes and that will keep everything close up and this axle will probably be moved forward. I don't know, maybe four inches or so, uh, which will involve moving the steering box and a lot of work. It'll just be all custom stuff. So yeah, but uh, that's kind of the route I'm going. So that's gonna happen after I get all this stuff pulled out and I'll have to start getting all the stuff to start um, building those links and setting everything up. 
but I did get my shocks. It's kind of dark over here. I've been cleaning my shop and there's stuff everywhere still. So I got some 3.0 shock uh, Fox bypasses. I got them custom built. So they got one inch tubes, trophy truck tubes on them. They're 14 inch. And I have some coilovers back there, some bumps somewhere. There's all kinds of parts in here. I got, um, yeah, so basically that's for the front end. And then, I mean, I'll kind of walk around here. Over here, I'll start, and you can see I ended up doing all the um, unibody stiffeners. Everything's TIG welded all the way down this thing. And that was the first thing I've ever TIG welded because I don't know how to TIG weld. And that was a harsh learning experience. And three years later, I've done a lot of TIG welding and I've learned a lot. And it's something that you kind of like wish you could redo. <laughs> but it turned out, you know, pretty good. I mean, better than a lot of people's uh, MIG welded stuff. I mean, my whole goal with this project is to learn, so, and create something cool that I can use. So it's welded all the way down this thing, all the way under, everything's welded. So, and then I also did the two by six uh, kind of rock slider tie-in thing. This is the first side. I did this one about a year ago. And, uh, well, maybe a year and a half. I was struggling welding the seam between the body and here. And since then I have learned how to mitigate the problems I was having. So the other side turned out a lot better. Um, I, I need to come in and cover past this because I just think it looks terrible. Um, like I did the other side. So I'll show you the other side here. It turned out way better. Um, as you can see here, I'll walk you down it. I mean, that seam with the body is just a lot cleaner. I mean, this has all been wire wheeled right now because everything will need painted and I just don't like leaving uh, any type of things on them. I'd rather protect them because you know, this thing could sit for another three years knowing my, uh, my timelines and I just want to prevent any kind of rust or anything, just surface rust happening. So I just kind of wire wheel it and then just coat it with something like WD-40 or something easy to take off. But yeah, so that's done over there. I just got this side done maybe last week and I got a rear uh, um, Ford nine inch, a rough stuff nine inch housing with, I think these are wide open designs unit bearing cups that, I mean, they're all TIG welded on there, pressed in, fit, TIG welded on the inside, and Ford um, unit bearings that are re-drilled to, I think, eight on six and a half. But yeah, I got those on both sides. I built these uh, trailing arms. They come in a kit that's like a, I think a two by four that's laser cut. Um, or it might be plasma cut, I can't remember. I think it's laser cut to, that you can kind of uh, pull it together. I forget who makes it. I think it's Moto Belt. Moto Belt or somebody. You can kind of see the TIG welds in there maybe. Oh yeah, it's lighting up. So it's all TIG welded on the inside. On the outside and all the fits are perfect. They are machined to that housing. So yeah, and then they all have drive flanges. So this will actually take uh, I think you could go 45 spline if you wanted, but I'm not gonna have that much power. So, uh, I also got in here the transfer case, uh, rebuilt and pulled out, did the SYE, and I built like kind of a micro polishing setup out of a tumbler over here, a Harbor Freight tumbler. It's got all ceramic beads in it, let's see. Sitting over there with all my other stuff. And I micro polished all those gears in there and they came out like a mirror. And I cleaned them and that thing meshes so nice, shifts so nice. And that's the MP, oh, I'm gonna mess it up, 242, I think. So it's got the, it's got four wheel drive and 
all-wheel drive and it does the all-wheel drive instead of like a friction all-wheel drive it does it using um, like a differential style um, like center diff which is kind of cool I don't know I might blow it apart who knows we'll see but yeah so that's all been redone and it has all cable shifted uh, stuff in there the trans juggled trans I've pulled apart uh, the um, uh, pan off and I've I redid all of the oh yeah yeah I redid all the valve body stuff in there and did whatever shift kits and drilled out certain things and just kind of followed some tips on some random forms I don't know and we'll see how that does I don't even know the shape of that transmission too much I didn't drive it that much but yeah it's been redone and everything so that stuff is in pretty good shape but as you can see I have a lot of work to do <laughs> but um, I am also doing uh, just a typical I think it's a winter shifter design to control the AW4 it'll be controlled with uh, some persons I think RA designs type like controller that lets you build uh, I have all the parts in here um, let you build a controller that you can have a full automatic transmission a full manual type valve body a full manual with a tr transmission controller control lockup or with the lockup turned off full manual lockup like it's endless options so I'm gonna have to figure out that and so there's all kinds of micro switches that go inside this winter shifter it's built for it because for this ch transmission shift it has to have a selected location on the cable and an electronic signal selecting a location for something to happen so it's got to have both so the cams have to be set up right in the sidewinder so I'm going to build a center console for all that stuff. I'm going to keep the air, uh, let's see, blowing in the back. I'm trying to think here. And then, I mean, as you can see, I'm. this is kind of where this axle is planning to sit. Lots of trimming. Uh, I think the wheelbase ends up being somewhere about 118, maybe? But I, I did also finish the other trailing arm. It's sitting over here on the other piles of parts. But yeah, so that's all been finished and welded up. It's welded all the way down and yeah. So that's ready to go and start mocking up the rear. I need to make the upper links and see where they need to land. I'm gonna build a custom fuel tank that's kind of built in, braced with the rear bumper to get the capacity I need and wraps kind of around the axle. I'm trying to figure out if I need to, like how much I need to trust this for as light as this thing is gonna be. It's not gonna be some heavy trophy truck. So um, I'm gonna have to figure that out. But uh, that could interfere with my tank and my tank dimensions. So I'll have to figure that out. Yeah, back here I have the third member. It's gonna, it has all uh, 488 gears in it. So, yeah, I think that's what I have. So the front's just a 30 spline. It does have uh, air lockers, both things. A a ARB air lockers on both axles. I'm trying to think what else we got here. Um, it's basically all that I've done right now, but I gotta build the cage, that's the next thing. And to make the cage happen, I want to build it around the tie-in points of the shocks first and then go from there. So I need to finish taking the front three link out, the Iron Rock off-road one, and start building my own three link with straight links. And that will determine where my axle lands, which will then determine where my shocks need to land for their angles and clearances. 
And then once that's done, I gotta do that on the rear for the upper links and kind of build in my, as you see, this is just kind of sitting here right now. Uh, I don't really know where it's gonna land yet. I've been doing some numbers, but I don't know what I'm doing. So I don't know where it's gonna land yet. We'll see in the end. But I gotta build those upper links and I might have to cut out the whole back of this thing. Uh, I'm just kind of going as I go and whatever happens, happens. So we'll see, I've never built something like this. I'm trying to think what else here. The other thing I can kind of go over some more of these parts is so I do have PRP seats for it. I have the front, um, I think they're like Enduro Extreme, or I think it says it up there. Well, I guess I have this ladder here, so might as well go up. Or they're just the Enduros. PRP, and I got these colors. There's another one, and then there's actually a racing bucket seat. Oh, uh, where is it at? Oh, it's actually sitting behind the other two front seats. So yeah, those will go in there. Then oh, I forgot to show the wheels. So I got these, these, I'm gonna start out with 35s, but I'm building everything on the blue Jeep to take 37s and clear. I will build around the 37s and make them clear. So I originally got these 35s just to kind of get everything set and um, will be like my testing is just some, I think these are, what are these, uh, the uh, cam threes? Yeah, the cam threes. And then I forget what cam C B locks these are. I have no idea. Um, probably says somewhere. I don't know. I think they're like the grenades or something like that. But yeah, I, I got those. So they look pretty good on this thing because track width of this thing, well, wheel mount surface, I think ends up being at almost 70 or 69, 68. I can't remember, I have it written down, but uh, changing up with the front um, hub conversion stuff, that kind of makes the track width a little bit different. And I matched the rear for that too when I built that axle. So that should hopefully be, you know, like a normal width of uh, a JL or all the other things out there. So it's not gonna be uh, crazy wide, just kind of a full width build. And I had to get these wheels offset a little bit, as you can tell, uh, to be able to clear those brakes. They are very close clearing, clearing those brakes. So there are some big brakes. In the rear, I actually have, I don't know, if it, all the stuff's just piled in here. But you can kind of see, maybe back there, yeah, they're gonna be Willwoods. And uh, I have all kinds of stuff in here. But yeah, so there's some stuff back there. Oh, here, I'll grab one out here right now so you guys can see it. Uh, yeah, the aluminum hats. But yeah, they're actually vented, vented uh, rotors. So yeah, I don't know. Hopefully they'll they'll go. I gotta figure out. Don't know what I'm really doing. I just have a bunch of parts and gonna have to figure out brake bias and setting up the the pedal with dual master cylinders and all that stuff that I don't know anything about. So, yeah, that's gonna be another thing. Oh, the other thing is this front sway bar. I don't know if this will stay or if I'll have to make a uh, certain type of one or I don't know yet because all this is gonna have to be cut out basically, this front cross member, because that steering box has to be moved up which is right there. Maybe I'll look into a different steering box that can handle maybe some more abuse. I need to do the research on those things. But I plan on, I wanna build a just a either a stroker or 
I, yeah, stroker or boosted, I, I really don't know. I want to build a higher horsepower 4 oil for this. Just, I really like this motor. And it's just kind of what I'm going for. Like, I, I want that being the limiting factor. And I don't just want to have 600 horse because I think it'd tear this thing apart. So, we'll see what happens. Um, I guess I'll go on to my white Jeep explanation here. So, this white Jeep I bought from my father-in-law, I think in this summer basically, yeah, this summer, and it had a blown up engine in it, and was basically stock, it had, it might have had, it had a little bit of a ready lift, I think some blocks actually, some blocks in the back, and some easy ride control arms, which it still has right now, I think. Yeah, those easy ride control arms, lower control arms. But I since have put a long block, a new motor in it, um, put new steering, track bar, springs, ball joints, brakes, rotors, um, rear leaf springs, Trying to think what else. Rear leaf springs. Um, maybe that's all. I mean, I, I basically had to rebuild the front end. I did everything but the joints for the control arms. And, it, oh, it's got a new steering box. I mean, everything motor-wise, all components are new. There, power steering pump. Uh, but it, it'll, it's just a daily driver. It'll never be on bigger tires than 31s. My wife wanted this thing, and since I took the blue Jeep from her and take forever to do anything, I put the work in and got this thing and kind of did it all up. It's actually a very clean, I mean, not right now. It isn't very clean, but it's a, it's a very clean Jeep. It's got, I think, 250,000 miles on it, but I mean, Interior-wise, it's very clean. Other than all the stuff we have in it that makes it dirty. <laughs> but I need to fix how it drives. It drives terribly. It will, everything's very tight, but it just, it's fighting itself. And I think the control arm, upper control arm bushings are out and uh, the unibody's kind of flexing at the steering box and all different types of things. So I'm going to <laughs> take the old axle from the blue Jeep, which is the same axle as this, with the same gears. Um, I've brought it in today. It's sitting right there, just the little Dana 30. And I am gonna cut basically the lower control arm mounts off of it and the front track bar, pan hard bar mounts off of it. And I'm trying to think what else. I think that's the main thing. But I'm gonna basically rebuild this axle and change those mounts out. I'll do new um, ball joints and everything and go through, I'm gonna put new bearings in it. I'm just gonna do the whole rebuild kit. And then I'm taking that three link kit from the blue Jeep and gonna install it on the white Jeep. It's more of its caliber of, of lift for what it's doing, you know? So, I mean, guys will probably run that on some crazy setups, but for what I'm doing, it'll uh, ride real nice on the road. We obviously take this off road, but we aren't just beating on it, but I want it to be able to take a beating and still hold up. So um, kind of be like a little chase rig or like something we can flat tow behind the truck and the camper, or, you know, just an all around rig. So I want it to drive real nice. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna build a high, uh, let's see, the over the axle track bar mount for it using this JK one I have sitting over here. So, this mount right here, I am going to put somewhere. In here. 
So that's the start. And then I got some other parts. I think I might put a truss on it so it doesn't bend. But yeah, we'll see what happens. But that's the start for this thing. And hopefully those parts will show up in the next week. I can get that thing taken care of. And then uh, I'm going to build a front bumper for it, a front tube bumper, to kind of tie the frame together. And hopefully that helps it steer a little better also. That's the other thing. I finally just got a tube bender. So that's a nut big thing I've been waiting on for the Blue Jeep project. And I just got a Rogue Fab bender and a tube notcher. I just welded it together uh, maybe a month ago or so. But yeah, I've used it on a one project so far and I had a lot of fun and hopefully I can use it a lot more here. Well, it looks like I, I'm going to have to. So I, I want to build a front bumper to kind of um, help me think of what I want to do for the Blue Jeep's front bumper. And hopefully that can help tie in the front. Then after the front bumper and the three link and all those bracket updates, I will probably drive it for a while and I have the old axle out of the Blue Jeep, which is a um, Chrysler eight and a quarter that I already have the mounts kind of TIG welded on there, just kind of tacked. I mean, they need a second pass. Uh, everything's kind of tacked together because I was just using it to mock it up. I'm actually going to install the four link because I have all this stuff originally from the Blue Jeep and the Blue Jeep just got way out of hand and it's going to be a lot different than what I originally thought. I'm going to use all that stuff and put it on the white Jeep so it won't all go to waste. And you know, these are the exact same year. This is a 2001. Blue Jeep's a 2001. I actually have the block from this Jeep still. So then I can build a spare motor for this, the blue Jeep, because this motor still runs in this thing. It was running when we pulled it in here. I think it's got 190,000 miles on it, or I can't remember. Yeah, oh yeah, 198 when it was sold. So probably 199 maybe, <laughs> if that, when I pulled it apart. But um, not, too, not too many miles. I mean, these things run forever, so. I'll use this motor as my mock-up motor. I'll, I want to get this thing done in who knows how long, but I can then kind of figure everything out and then have a race motor built for it, ready to put in. And that's probably what I'm going to do. So that old block from this thing that I think it basically had a really bad blown head gasket and got super hot. And, and I think, you know, the heads were definitely bad. But the block looked great, so I have that identical year block for that, that thing that will match that I can rebuild. So that will be nice. But that's just kind of a overview of my projects that I got going on. This is just here. I want to start kind of going around and showing uh, people what I do at work too. I farm and ranch, and I'm going to try to do some videos of that and get better at kind of posting some things and see if people even want to watch anything like this. So yeah, I'll set you guys over here. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully I can get some consistent videos posted and some good content that some people actually want to watch. I'll catch you next time.